Um, today's talk is about ISO 27035 and we have Dr. Vilius Benetis. Please welcome. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask any of you have been participating in uh, creating the standard? Good, no one. Oh, you, you have, okay. I'll try to be polite. Uh, and uh, is there anyone who is using, actively using uh, the standard in your organization? Okay, I'll bring you some chocolates from Lithuania. Because you are the first one person in my life whom I meet uh, using the standard. <laughs> so uh, the genesis of this talk uh, is such that in uh, SIG, CSAT uh, Services SIG, um, we're discussing how to build the services models, etc., etc., etc. And then uh, I put in the, in the discussion a point, maybe let's look, uh, I have seen this uh, 27035 uh, standard for incident uh, handling, incident management, maybe let's incorporate. And uh, Klaus Peters comment back, for me felt like long time disappointment. I said, okay, what, that, what is it about? And when I start, I bought the standard, I read it once, read it twice, read it a third time, and submitted the talk. So here, I'm not the practitioner of the standard. I'm practitioner of incident uh, management. Uh, and uh, the first slide is that my wish would be that we had a very robust standard, what we can replicate everywhere, and everybody would refer like to ISO 27001. It's still possible to discuss about one clause, another clause, but overall it's understood very well. And this standard, uh, what we're talking about is uh, a little bit different. And when I look at the community of CSETs and SOCs, I see that um, there's a growing demand on uh, profes professionalization in the teams, incident response teams. And uh, if there's a standard which is called uh, information security incident management, so probably it's about exactly that, about how professional, how you can become a professional team, successful team, effective team. So, up till now, uh, my main two standards or documents uh, to, to, to use or to refer to to any team around the world, I would say one is from NIST. That's why on my tag I have, I know Tom uh, Miller, because uh, I saw, uh, oh, sorry, uh, NIST uh, 861 uh, release 2 has uh, Tom's name from 2012. Uh, I asked him personally how it was to create the standard. So he said some nice comments. It was a long time ago and the new version is coming. I did not know about that, but uh, it's going to be release uh, 3, it seems. And another uh, book with uh, firefighters, it's uh, from Menisa. The main author is Don Stickwood, as well known by many people, as one of the people, uh, persons in, um, in SIM3. As well as TLP, uh, SIG group and other places. So these are typical ones, and what if I would place third one and would refer to it? So that was my kind of research agenda for this talk. And uh, let's see. So, how does uh, standard look like? Like a uh, normal, typical ISO standard. Uh, and it talks, it says about, but it's in information technology area, information security, incident management. And here's a screenshot of uh, part one. So the structure, I know the, the letters are a little bit small for you to see, but uh, the talk is recorded, gonna be on YouTube, uh, and presentation is gonna be available as well. So don't stress your eyes uh, the last day of the conference. But basically, here I wanted to say that it's not a single standard. It's chopped in parts. There are three parts released, and fourth part in preparation. I do not comment on the fourth part during this talk because I've, uh, it's still not published, and uh, I believe the text, what I've seen, uh, might change, or maybe I cannot even refer to them publicly because I didn't buy that standard. Um, now, the price. In Canadian, if you go to ISO.org, it's for three parts which are available, it's 640 Canadian. In my own currency, if I go to my uh, LSD.LT standardization body, it's three times cheaper. Um, some time ago, 
I remember I, I bought standard ISO 27032, which was for internet security, no, for cyber security standard from Uganda for zero. So you might, there are 200 countries around the world, maybe some of them provide the standards for free, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to search for that, but uh, if you are sensitive uh, for the price, then uh, you can try to, to get a standard from Uganda or from Malawi or some other place, and then uh, maybe it's going to be both interesting to say, okay, I'm using such a standard, but the text, text is the same. So uh, the first part, which was released the uh, first time in 2016 uh, and now updated in uh, uh, 2302 or so, a few months ago. Second edition, it's only 33 pages. Then second part is uh, again updated recently, 53 pages. Uh, third part, which was released first time in 2020, uh, 31 page. And uh, committee stage, or. CD, I don't remember exactly how it's called in ISO. It's uh, for coordination, it's uh, fourth part not released yet. Now, the reason of existence of this standard, as it defined in the text, is that in case you follow ISO 27001, other organizations who deploy, who have deployed ISO 27001. Okay, so for your organizations, if you say that, okay, I need to do particular uh, Annex A controls, 5.24 to 5.26 and 6.8, so this standard, what we're talking today about, it's for these controls to be better explained. So if you have a need to follow the standard and understand how to do these particular controls, this is what you take. So this is the objective of a paper. If it's not what is required for you, maybe you can open it and, and read it, and maybe you get inspired, or maybe get some pieces uh, of text what is relevant for you. I'm gonna mention about it. So uh, here on the screen, in the diagrams, what I took from, from the standard, it's uh, in the center below is ISMS, so uh, Incident uh, Information Security Management System, and then it is, uh, supported uh, by incident uh, handling, uh, incident management uh, processes. And uh, as well, it's mentioned that uh, in the standard that it's not comprehensive guide, whatever it means. So it means probably that if you follow it, doesn't mean you're gonna do it right, because it's not comprehensive. Now, then you're looking at, uh, uh, some of you are from coordinating sets, so bad luck, this standard is not for coordinating sets, it's for internal teams. Uh, part four, which is to be released, is gonna be for coordination. So the ideas, what we're gonna now look at, it's, you, you need to think that it's for the internal teams, internal SOCs, internal incident response teams. Now, I was reading and reading, reading and reading and trying to make the model. I'm trying to understand what's working and what is not working for me when I read the standard. So in my world, first of all, uh, I, I, it looks like this, that all technologies, all CMs, NDRs, uh, XDRs, uh, EDRs, and uh, other technologies support the following model, that we, we look at different events, and some events can be security logs or security events. From there, automate, automatically we create alerts by particular detection logic and uh, humans or machines triage the alerts and then create incidents. And we handle incidents from opening to closure, and that's how incident uh, management happens. That's at least what I observe in the world. When I read the standard, it talks about information security event. The definition is that it indicates a possible breach of information security or failure of controls. So event, information security event, has already negative connotation. It's not just any event, what you, any log, what you see in the systems. It's already the, the, if they breach the controls or uh, failure of controls or possible breach. And then information, uh, no, so, sorry. So first events are anything, but then uh, info, information security events, it's, uh, this breach of, uh, possible breach or failure of controls. And uh, so we get information security events, and then from there, 
we classify them as uh, incidents or not. Depending on the logic, the logic is uh, that uh, in information security incidents are uh, events with risk of harm uh, to organization, operations or information. Meaning that there's a, if there's a failure of controls, security controls, or there's a, a, a possible breach, but if we, there's no risk associated to that, it's still information security event. Otherwise, it's uh, incident. I tried to ground uh, such concept, uh, I somehow failed. So if somebody understands this logic and could explain practically what this means, I have more chocolate. Good, so I, I see the same hand. Good, we, we can discuss afterwards, but this is uh, for you to be aware that there's particular logic encoded because later on uh, we, there are definitions saying that incident management, that's operations of effective uh, information security incident management, it uh, uh, includes incident handling and there's a process from detecting to uh, lessons learned. Then inside there's information security investigation concept, which becomes a little bit tricky because it's mixed a little bit with forensics, maybe, and I highlighted uh, the, the word analysis because for me it seems that it's just incident uh, analysis part. And then there is separate incident response. I, I, that's mitigation resolution. And then there are two teams defined in the standard. One is incident management team, so hand, uh, taking care of all incident management uh, discipline in the organization. And then there is separate one, incident response team. And then in definitions in the different parts, there's a little bit of confusion. Because uh, certs supposed to be incident response teams when you already have an incident, when you assign, and then on the other hand, the cert or SOC manager is mentioned as incident management team close to the CDM management. So it's kind of confusing in the terms, so if you start using it and applying it, please pay attention uh, on the definitions. Uh, now, what I like about the standard, it has clear model, for example, the, the, the reasoning, the model of reasoning why the incidents uh, and events exist. Human make errors, technology fail, vulnerabilities, are there due to imperfection of controls and there's a risk associated things. Very simple. So if you say instead of all cyber security is important, information security is important, here it's very clear. For items, you can connect to them. So I like it from the standard. As well, I like uh, six things clearly listed if you want to say what is the, what's the point of information management and you're a little bit confused how to write the text when you say, okay, there's a standard, it talks about it. You just pick up, rephrase, and say it's according to the standard. So easy way to, uh, to solve uh, the question. Alternatively, you can ask ChatGPT or, or some other people. Uh, they could answer, tell you as well, discuss with you what, what's your point. But if you want to say, okay, a standard was made by smart people, these people discussed, agreed, and this is the, the best what we could uh, come up with. Uh, as well, there's uh, nine things of uh, benefits uh, of structuring or making it more professional uh, or incident handling and management uh, area. Good points as well. You say, okay, we feel what we need to, there's a pressure to, for us to be modernized and more effective, but what are true reasons? And then there's a list and then you can discuss with those who apply pressure to you. Is it, why do you want uh, it to work well better? This, 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 or all of them. So it clarifies uh, the motivation of uh, making this uh, more professional, more ninja type of uh, incident handling. Now, then, we uh, then a standard defines sub-teams. And I, uh, from the names of the sub-teams which are defined in the standard, I, I took the uh, first uh, standard, or first services model. And I try to plug saying which team does what or responsible for what. Uh, change management team kind of did not fit in the model and uh, stational awareness or otherwise could be the, the threat intelligence part did not have a team as associated. So I don't know was it that on purpose or not. The standard as well introduces some confusion about vulnerabilities. 
because quite often it talks about events, information security events and vulnerabilities, but then afterwards talks about only as an artifact uh, uh, information security event report. There's no information security vulnerability report. So should I treat uh, vulnerabilities as events or not? Because we're saying that it's different, but how different? So it's, it's the confusion is uh, uh, remaining. And then we have a schema of a process flow, how it flows. I tried to play in re reality scenarios. Uh, it did not work well for me. So maybe there are organizations who can, uh, based on the definitions, how you, you name what is the event, what is the information security event, what is the incident, it might flow through such work chat. And the teams, uh, coordinate or uh, another might, but for me, it did not work well. So probably the people who got created standard, we created based out of practice what we saw in their own organizations which are not fully aligned uh, with the work what we do here in the SIGs and other places, at least where I see the work and I see how it's being discussed, or maybe it's uh, partial academical work. I don't know the answer because I've never met anyone who wrote the standard. Uh, incident classification is uh, in appendices. Uh, what surprised me that in first part, there's a suggested classification model, so it's from 2023, when we have already work on the classification of the incidents and uh, of different sorts, it's a completely new. I've never seen it anywhere else. But there's a type of incident, then type of attacks, or information gathering. But in another part of the document of the standard, it talks uh, security incident categories, uh, the, the template for incident reporting, and there is completely different categories. So I don't know what, what uh, people had on their mind when uh, we're creating these uh, samples, why we didn't coordinate at least in the same standard to have the same types and examples. I don't know. Uh, so summary of uh, my opinion, uh, it's a good standard for those who follow ISO 27001 and top-down uh, approach. Uh, it's important to understand that most of the sets and SOCs, they would get the value to implement ISO 27001 to protect own SOC as said, but that's different perspective than following uh, and, uh, uh, where's the horse and where's the carriage. So if the horse is ISO 27001 and then that's why you create set, then it's a good idea to follow the standard. But if it's reversed, but at first you have a set or SOC with the objectives, and then you implement proper management of security of set, then probably you should not follow the standard directly because you already have a structure what you need to follow. Uh, so standard provides structure, but it's on substance, I find it a little bit short. And uh, there's quite a few points on confusion. For example, it mentions life cycle of incident or maybe incident handling, I'm not sure, but it never explains what it is. So I can just assume maybe it's from the birth of event or incident, it's not clear. So using the terms without explaining what it is and then implicitly using afterwards, it's a little bit confusing. A point of contact term, uh, and then it feels that it's actually a ticketing system. And this ticketing system, maybe it's uh, incident management log management ticketing system, or maybe incident register definition. So it introduces additional confusion just by using additional words, probably, which should not be used, because then we, it's not clear where, where, uh, what uh, matches. Then there's incident report and event report. And I mentioned that information security event is uh, classified as incident. So here are two different reports. You write one, which you give to, according to a schema, uh, you give to the incident handler to classify as incident. And if he is not classifying as incident, you keep it as event. Otherwise, you start writing new report. And uh, uh, about vulnerabilities I already mentioned, um, detection uh, parameters and other parameters. And the uh, standard requires as soon as possible. So I think maybe we should just omit that. And what does it mean pres prescribe? You should do a s uh, in detection as soon as possible. What does that mean? What are alternatives? 
how, when else we could even think of doing detection, if not as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, reporting without unnecessary delay, response as soon as possible. Well, probably, but uh, for me, this term somehow I uh, useless does not provide guidance. And uh, uh, detect an alert on anomalous, suspicious, or malicious activities, and then taxonomy talks otherwise. And then if you're not careful or like junior specialist and you read the text and then you start, okay, so what should I do about incident, uh, uh, event, uh, information security, event uh, working. So the event report should contain all circumstances and facts for comprehension of the event. If you start focusing to provide all facts, you would never finish the event report and probably it's a waste of resources. So that's felt bad for me because it's wrong guidance for effective teams. It should be additional words in that sentence. So there are related standards saying, okay, this is just, if you use that, your additional standards, so it populates and um, ISO 27 family increases, explodes with the standards, which are not coherent uh, to the uh, maximum level. So, thank you very much. Uh, my question to you, uh, which one you choose, when, and for what reasons? So my conclusion from your talk is the standard appears to be disconnected from reality and creates more confusion rather than providing clarity. Can you convince me that's the wrong conclusion? In my opinion, yes. We have some benefits because uh, when we think about the teams and we need to justify why we put some objectives or what models. So some of the guidelines, I, I think it's good. Uh, three slides, there, I think they valuable what I find. And as well, it's fine if you are pushed very heavily regulatory environment, implement ISO 27001 and all affiliated standards, then it's relevant because you just go and uh, name the teams, do all of that without too much thinking. Uh, and, uh, but the end result probably will not be optimal uh, from first trial. Maybe somebody else has different opinion. But after reading all of it, preparing the slides, uh, I better understand Peter's uh, um, thought and, uh, and not depression, but uh, such feeling that it's, it could have been much better, but just probably didn't happen. Hiya. If you're trying to develop a incident response team for a corporate and you want to make them as effective as possible, which one would you pick as a, as a form of guidance? I would pick first services model and pick the first one, Anissa, from okay. 2010. Right. Okay, thank you. I think it's most practical, pragmatical approach uh, where it talks this, this, and this, and uh, there's a very nice workflow. So, for example, for practical thing, it's either you start thinking in circles, that incident handling is actually a circle and you're gonna move around in circles and circles, or it's ticket opened, ticket closed, move on. Another ticket open, ticket closed. So uh, I always say that it's, I, I think that it's about pragmatism. We just apply what needs to be applied without, with a minimal energy because uh, we lack resources. So optimization of resources and the uh, meaningfulness in the process is the first criter criteria versus being top mature process description, etc. Any other questions? Laurie? Hi. Have you considered putting your comments into like say a paper and publishing it or sending it to the ISO group so that to make them aware that it's time to start it again and re-fix, like say, 
fix the problems that you're you're seeing? Uh, no, this is going to be recorded on YouTube, and okay. I don't know whom to send. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there's a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, which do you think is the best or uh, more effective uh, standards for a uh, centralized or distributed incident response uh, team? Mm, there's not. I, I'm not aware of the standard. The closest one, what I would say, is from Carnegie Mellon University sector CSERT, a document released last year or one and a half year ago. Uh, so Justin, who is developing forever topics, including uh, this topic uh, here in their interviews, I think that's a good uh, document to read and uh, their ideas to develop more documents on coordinating versus uh, factual or internal teams, but there's no standard work. This part four is supposed to be in that direction, but uh, I don't know the status. The CD status, does it mean that it's almost final or is they still working a lot? And the basis are other standards and principles, so I don't know how to make it uh, proper. So. Peter. Hey, I'm Klaus Peter Kosakowski. I'm one of the person he mentioned. And my confusion that led me to the same conclusion than, than yours was starting five years ago when I was sitting with one of the DAX 40 uh, organizations in Germany, which are the main, most biggest ones. And they said, Peter, your assessment must be wrong because that's a standard, it's coming from ISO. <laughs> and I said, okay, you, you know me and you called me because you wanted to have an expert opinion on this, and I tell you this is uh, okay. I will not repeat the word. Um, so they continued using the ISO standard. But, but be careful, it's not a standard. It's a standard organization, but the documents itself, they are not standards. Yeah, And they will most likely have been written by four different groups, um, f all for good reasons, but there's no overall adjustment. Then I read, it says international standard. That's how I read documents. If it says a duck, it is a duck, so okay. on paper. Then you're more up to date because then you probably have the news version of 23? Yeah, this is a screenshot from 23. Yeah, okay. But before it was not the standard. So yes, they are trying to push it. And that also means that the document not good for practice will become a standard over time and then people will just look for the standard and I don't think that FIRST has any standard yet but there's a gap or a vacuum you might say. So uh, I think FIRST has connections to the ISO and this should be pushed forward with support of, of all. Yeah? Because otherwise all the other people not in FIRST, they will look for standards, find one, take it and be doomed. But we, we have success case where somebody is using and smiling and happy, so it's not so bad. It just probably we didn't find the way to understand it well. Uh, there's, there's always an option that uh, I'm wrong, right? So. No, 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 no. The, the thing is the person that is smiling is probably clever enough to fill the gaps and make it better based on the reading and f avoiding the mistakes. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Thank you for your presentation. Uh, you work on associating the service area of the CSAT services with the uh, teams in, the st in this standard. Now, on the other hand, the CSAT CIV now describing the role and responsibility, role and competencies of the CSAT services now. My question is, which approach do you consider more preferable? Thank you. Because I'm one of the active members of FIRST uh, CSAT services uh, group, and uh, working with other experts, we, which we always validate. There's a gentleman called Chin, maybe not in the room, but he's always here, look, but maybe it's not uh, 
it's going to be confusing, or etc. And then we reevaluate, reevaluate. Is it practical? Do we have uh, expert opinion? Have we seen it working in the the world, and how, and why, and what arguments? So that's uh, what I prefer. So I, I believe that the difference is that some of the people are academics here or practitioners, but not fully in the domain of incident handling. Any further questions? No? Okay, if everyone could please remember to fill out your session survey and please thank Dr. Vilius Benetis. Thank you. Thank you.